Hello on Fulperson, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about yet another incredible discovery coming from the center of the Milky Way, from the center of our own galaxy. And this time it's based on the observations from the incredible Chandra X-ray Observatory, the images from which the scientists were able to stitch together and discover what the center sort of looks like. And this is really important because generally speaking, because the center of the Milky Way is relatively active and there is a lot of gas everywhere, we normally don't really get to see any details coming from this region. From our perspective, most of it sort of looks like this. And so trying to tell apart what's happening here or learning any details requires a lot of very specific observations using specific frequencies of light. So in optical light, in light that our eyes can see, we cannot actually see anything. But once we look at the universe in the X-rays, and start looking at the center of the galaxy in that particular frequency of light, we start seeing a little bit more detail. And this is what NASA's Chandra usually does really well. But we can also see some other details by using radio frequencies as well, which allow us to penetrate a lot of the invisible parts of the galaxy and the universe as well. And so by combining the radio emissions with X-ray emissions and then by stitching everything together into a relatively large and extremely precise panorama, Here's what the scientists were able to produce. Now this is a pretty large image, but right here you're about to see what the center of the galaxy looks like in X-ray and in radio light. So somewhere right here at the center of the galaxy, that's where we expect the supermassive black hole to be. But as you can kind of see, there are a lot of other details and a lot of other unusual formations that seem to have been identified in this recent image and this recent study that you can find in the description below. But first, let's actually identify some of these features and some of these um, structures. So the Sagittarius A star is in this region, and as you can see, the scientists in this paper pointed out some of the other interesting features. The ones we're going to be discussing more in this video are these unusual filamental formations that you see marked with red rectangles. This one in particular is actually extremely interesting, and if we were to zoom in here, we would see something that looks like this. Now, by itself, this is already a really mysterious, very unusual, and to some extent previously unseen structure. But I'll tell you in a few minutes what exactly we think this is. First of all, what exactly is this showing us? Well, it's literally showing us the galactic weather. It's basically whatever happens in the center of the galaxy when a lot of different interaction occurs because of the magnetic um, interaction, because of the activity from the central black hole, because of various supernova, various stars being created and exploding, and a lot of different activity all happening all at the same time. This is literally what we usually observe around our sun as well, except here things happen much faster because the sun is obviously much smaller. This type of a galactic weather is to some extent very similar to the solar weather, and the effects and thus the actual interaction is also extremely similar. But because things here are really, really large, we're talking about hundreds and sometimes even thousands of light years in size, everything here is much, much slower. And right now, this is definitely the clearest and the most detailed picture we've ever had of the center of the galaxy, and because of the X-ray and radio observations, all of this dust kind of disappeared from the view. So this is what you would see if you were to remove this whole thick layer of dust and gas that's sort of blocking the view of the center. Now, one of the unusual discoveries here, or in some sense confirmations of something, was the discovery of a relatively large bubble of gas, specifically magnetized plasma gas, that extends down or south of the galactic core and is roughly around 700 light years in size. And this is based on another study I discussed a couple of years ago, when back in 2019 the scientists discovered that there was an unusual formation, bubble-like formation, that suggested some sort of a large eruption that happened from the center of the galaxy. This was detected in radio emissions, and so this of course suggested that our black hole in the center very likely produced a really large eruption sometime in the past. And all of this is probably directly related to the so-called Fermi bubbles you see right here, which are much, much larger in size, but do seem to represent some kind of a similar event that was probably a lot more powerful and happened sometime in the past, even further in the past, possibly a few million years ago. And so this, of course, does imply that the galactic center of our own galaxy is occasionally active and produces these very large emissions. 
These images also show us very large amounts of gas outflowing all over the place, and most of this gas is very likely produced by a tremendous amount of different supernova happening all over the place. With each of these supernova sort of acting like bubbles that pop, create a lot of energy, a lot of pressure, and spread things around, while at the same time also producing a lot of other effects we still don't really understand. But a lot of this gas is also very highly magnetized, and because it's basically plasma moving around and creating a lot of different interaction with other plasma, this of course results in the formation of tremendously large and very powerful magnetic lines. This is the image of the center of our galaxy taken by the NASA's SOFIA telescope, which sort of shows us these magnetic lines moving through the entire galaxy all over the place. And one thing we know as a fact about magnetic lines, and that's from observing our sun and also from observing planets, is that they do have a tendency to reconnect. And this magnetic reconnection seems to happen all over the place. Now, we know that, for example, this is how our sun sort of expels a lot of material, which we usually refer to as the coronal mass ejection. These powerful ejections are so powerful, as a matter of fact, that they can easily disturb a lot of electronics and electric activity on our own planet. At the same time, this is how a lot of planets like Venus lose their atmosphere. Through various magnetic reconnections, they actually create these tiny bubbles of atmosphere that ends up escaping into outer space. But it looks like something very similar happens on galactic scales as well. Because those two rectangles I showed you before were pointing at these things right here. And this seems to be the result of a magnetic reconnection of galactic scales. Both of these features right here are perpendicular to the plane of the galaxy and also relatively similar in size and in structure. They're both approximately 20 light years in length and about 0.2 light years in thickness. And from what the scientists think happened here was very similar to what happens around our sun. Magnetic lines reconnected and created these formations which are also sending out a lot of material and a lot of energy throughout the inner regions of the galaxy. And this is exactly what the scientists think kind of mixes and creates a lot of different interaction on the inside. These events probably play a very important role in helping the gas move around the intergalactic medium and also possibly create new stars as well as a lot of this material moves around and as a lot of these large molecular clouds start colliding into one another. These also create a lot of energy and they also end up heating up a lot of gas. So they're responsible for a lot of different things happening in the center of the galaxy. Which literally shows us a previously unknown mechanism that definitely helps galaxies and uh, galactic structures to evolve, to become larger, to become more powerful, and to mix a lot of materials on the inside, possibly then sending it to the outside. And so the scientists currently are pretty sure that this is a completely new phenomenon nobody ever knew about before, and nobody really studied in detail. So expect a lot of studies about these unusual filaments in the future. They don't really have a name yet, they're just referred to as X-ray threads with a name starting with the letter G. I'm sure a cool name will probably follow in the next few months. But I guess it's really interesting how it looks like a lot of things in the universe do have very similar events and similar features happening on small scales and on larger scales. We know that magnetic interaction happens on planetary scales, and there are a lot of different magnetic reconnections even around planet Earth. We also know about magnetic reconnection around the Sun and other stars, and now it looks like it also happens on galactic scales. For all we know, it happens on even larger scales, possibly with galactic clusters, something that a lot of scientists will probably be investigating and studying, because there are definitely a lot of features and a lot of previous studies that have hinted on this as well. But what exactly does this do to regulate the galaxy and how exactly it affects the galaxy? None of these questions we can currently answer. For example, nobody knows how much energy is produced during these events, what exactly is being transported by these magnetic reconnections, and how this affects the evolution of the galactic center, or if it's actually even important for the galactic center. Does this happen around other galaxies? Other galaxies where it doesn't happen? And if so, why doesn't it happen there? So quite a lot of questions, not a lot of answers. More importantly though, this is sort of one of the possible answers for the mysterious cosmic rays we've been detecting, about which there's actually going to be another video or possibly have already come out. It's a video that talks about the unusual super powerful cosmic rays, sometimes referred to as the pentavolt rays, that seem to be too powerful to be produced by anything. 
but they could be coming and could be created by these unusually strong magnetic reconnection events coming from the center of the galaxy. So maybe this is actually a solution to one of the mysteries we currently have. But for now it's really early to tell. In some of the future videos we'll come back and talk more about these, especially once they get a cool name or when we discover something else about them. Until then, well it's definitely a really cool image, a really mysterious object, there's unfortunately not much we know about them just yet. Subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support the channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Check out the relevant studies and all of the relevant links in the description below, and stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.